Well, here we go. So this is the entrance of Jack's Inn. We're at the very front of the building. Keys to the exiting here. Welcome to the Science Center. Um, so, you know, this is the home of all of our science departments. So, you know, biology, chemistry, biochemistry, physics, uh, environmental science, all of those are housed. Um, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about all of these different places. But we're going to start by heading downstairs. All right. So hold on a second. All right, so the first thing that we're going to show you today is one of the four lecture halls on campus. Uh, and so this is one of the science center here. Um, our intro biology is with a bigger classroom here. And this is Jackson 100. So as you can see, um, it's auditorium style, you know, a bunch of students in here. This is actually where I had my first, my biggest class on campus. It was my intro chemistry class. Um, Chem 111 and Chem 112 were in here, and we had, you know, 75 students in my class, but not the biggest one I've experienced on campus. Um, but yeah, so this is what a, a college lecture hall looks like. Yeah. And I also, um, we have our genetics lectures in here too. Um, and you can see there's some space down front. Um, one of our genetics professors, Dr. Wynn, uh, is really awesome, and she will um, do a lot of, like, demonstrations and have you like pretend that you're a chromosome or like you're part of the lac operon um, and so you know this is a big room and allows for a lot of people to sit in but also it gives you room to do fun things like that to help you learn so cool and then we're gonna head on this way i'm gonna take the phone and let hannah take over all right if you need the hooks Okay, so uh, we also have a computer lab over here. Um, so if you guys take a seat in there, um, you can pop in and use the computers. You also can print in there as well. Um, so if you don't want to walk to the library uh, or the HCC, it's pretty convenient to just drop in there. And um, we also have a couple of lab spaces down here, uh, but we, um, we'll go ahead and take you guys back upstairs and continue showing you uh, like the main floor with walk. So that computer lab is one place where you might have classes every now and then, like um, I would buy a statistics class that meets in there. Um, and then also those intro labs, a lot of or the labs down here, a lot of them are for intro classes, like an intro biology course. So all of their labs are typically down here also. But now we're back on the second floor. Back, that's the entrance right there. I'm just gonna follow Hannah around here. So this is our organic. Let's get inside. But we can kind of show you guys um, some of the stuff that's in there. That's where all of our organic labs are held. And then there's a room off to the side that you can't see. Um, but there's a couple of instruments in there that we use for analysis. So that's a lot of cool stuff in there. And then this is where we go into the new part of the pool. And look who we ran into. How are you doing? What a chance encounter. up here. All right. All right. Hey, what's your name? What's up, my name's Bennett. Um, I'm a junior here at UW. Make sure you're speaking loud. <laughs> Am I not loud enough? My name's Bennett know. Varghese. I go to UW and I'm a junior. <laughs> All right, and what's your major? I'm a biomedical science major. Did you pick that? Well, I just really wanting to get older in biology and chemistry, um, do clinical hours and also do my biology and chemistry class that I want to take. And what's your favorite thing about science at Mary Washington? Ooh, it's got to be the professors, no doubt in my mind. Um, what we don't have in facilities and lots of students, lots of people, or intentional, they want to be close to us and they want to help us out, they want us to succeed. And so we can be totally real with them. And um, yeah, they, they just want to be there for us. And I really appreciate that a lot. And how about any advice for incoming freshmen? Okay, number one, be yourself. Everybody's Everybody else is going to be very nervous as well. Just embrace it, the awkwardness. Uh, 
find your people and so questions and be not like the professors to have a who just says something and everybody else just takes notes. Ask questions and just be yourself again. I think that's the most important thing. Stand out. Awesome. Well, thanks, Bennett. Thanks, Bennett. See you guys. All right. We'll take back over and we're going to continue uh, walking. This is a new part of Jepson, um, the addition. We just finished it about yeah, a year, year and a half it is of uh, the building. In yes. Uh, this is another one of our lecture halls on campus. Um, there are a lot of, uh, this is more environmental science on this side of the building. So a lot of environmental lectures will be housed in here. Um, so just another, you know, lecture hall setting that you didn't get to see downstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we're going to head back this way. But yeah, so the new addition, you know, double the size of Jeff saying really increase about the things that we can do, different equipment that we can house here. And look who else is here. Look. Hey, it's Sarah. <laughs> All right. Um, we just have a couple questions for you. Um, can you introduce yourself, your name, major, what year you are? I'm Sarah Connor, and I'm an environmental science major, natural tech, and I'm a current Great. Um, so what's like the coolest thing that you've done in an environmental science class, or like what is what stands out to you the most from your time at the science department? So when I think of that, I go to class with Dr. Shippet and it was environmental environmental problems. And so we had a past project presentation where we had to pick out a non-government organization that focused on the environment side of everything. And I picked the social services. So it was kind of a good way of the different ones and you could see about different things and how you can get involved in helping with that. Awesome. Um, do you have any advice for incoming freshmen? in here and they do a bunch of team activities so they can all kind of like scoot together and work on their products together so yeah. so this is just another um classroom setting that you can have mm -hmm. um it's one of part of our news so it's very nice <laughs> so we're gonna head upstairs now um, and look at um, a couple of new uh, other environmental science labs that are there we might lose you a little bit in the stairs, but just hold on. Hopefully we won't be too bad. But this is just one of the back stairwells here at, on campus. And we're currently heading up to the third floor. Not to hit here. So it's just like I said, more environmental science stuff. Um, so there's some other labs over there. Um, to the right. More lab space back there. Yep, so more labs back there. Here's some workspace for student use. That was one of the big things with the addition that they wanted more space for labs um, and for like research courses. So that was one thing that they really tried to add on. You can actually see here that this was the outside wall of um, old Jackson, so just the part of the building before the addition. Uh, and then they kind of joined them together, and the you know the windows and everything were on the inside now. Cool. And look who it is. What's up, Abby? Uh, not much. Okay, no. um, cool. We have a couple of questions for you. Yeah, sure. So, can you introduce yourself? Like, what's your name, um, major? What year are you? Um, so, hi, I'm Aviel here. I'm a sophomore and I'm a biomedical science major and English literature minor. And uh, what is your opinion on biology professors? Like, what, who's your favorite or do you, well, you know? I'm a bit biased, but my favorite biology professor is, of course, Dr. Nguyen. Had her for FSEM. She's great. But honestly, all of the biology professors here are pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. And do you have any advice for incoming freshmen? Uh, 
Um, you need to be able to strike a balance between studying and working and enjoying campus life here at the university. Awesome. That's yeah. very good advice. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. All right. And we're going to head this way. Hey, Abby. These are a couple um, of the cool little like study areas. There's a TV um, you can like plug your laptop in um, and project stuff up here. And then there's built-in chargers in the tables, which is cool for your phone. And there's little whiteboards that you can write on. And then here we're entering into the biological studies area. So um, we'll have a lot of biology classes like microbio. We have a research lab that we're gonna take you into called the fishbowl. So here's a quick look inside. So that's our fishbowl right here. I'm just gonna come on this way, we'll take you in. So welcome to 301. I'm going to try to get closer to you so can make it hear better. Dr. Agarwal. Hi. So see, here we have some students working on actual research. Hi. So like Kaylin right there, she's going to a PhD help. program at um, Georgia, Georgia, University of Georgia. So, you know, Mary Washington produces really great students who, you know, go far in life. And she's just one example. Yeah. Um, but here we also have Abby. And so we're going to ask Abby a few questions. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. So, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Abby. I am a sophomore biomedical sciences major with a minor in practical ethics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, uh, do you want to tell us? Um, Abby told us a bit about the professors. Do you have anything else um, you want to say? Um, yeah, just like to talk about the professors. Everyone here is really, really nice. They really, really want to help you. They care about you. They want you to succeed. And don't ever be afraid to approach a professor if you have trouble with anything or if you need help. Also, like talking about research, if, if any of you guys are interested in research, don't be afraid to approach a professor and ask them so you can work in their lab. They are really nice. And there is something that you will find that you will love. Yeah. Um, also, just uh, follow-up question um do you have a favorite like science class that you've taken um while you're here um i think my favorite science class would have to be uh phage hunters i think that was really cool we learned a lot of new things in that class um the professors were really nice dr aguilar and dr lewis were really really good professors <laughs> um so that was really nice to have them also like it's a really fun class um you do a lot of lab technique stuff and so if you're really interested in like learning new lab techniques or just getting more experience in lab, I think it would be a great option. Awesome. Well, thank you for um, actually one follow up question. Do you have any advice for freshmen, um, oh, incoming freshmen? Yeah, my advice would be like, don't worry. You don't have to have it all figured out. You know, like you still have time, just take your time and don't ever, yes, there may be times where you get a little stressed or overwhelmed, but you have a great community here of people who want to help you, encourage you and help you get to a place where you feel much better and where you are focused on your education and also focused on making great friendships. Awesome, thank you so much. You're welcome, bye. Uh, bye. Yeah, so as you can see in 301, we have a ton of research benches. So each professor has their own bench for the research that they do. Um, you know, a really busy stuff happening in here. Um, and over here, I can talk about my experience with research. So, you know, I started doing undergraduate research my second semester freshman year. I worked with Dr. Baker, she works with zebrafish, uh, measuring, you know, stress hormones in, in zebrafish. And also I did, Summer Science Institute um, over the summer, which Abby is also doing this summer. Woohoo! Um, I did that with Dr. Agarwal, um, and it was a really great experience. It was a paid internship um, where you get a stipend, you can live on campus and do some really intensive research. Um, and I don't know if you guys went to the biological um, session, at the biology, uh, biological sciences session just before this, but Dr. Dolby talked about that a little bit too. Um, so, you know, undergraduate research is something that we want students to try out, and you can find somebody who loves to do that with you. Um, and you'll be working in here with people like me and Abby and Abir. So we're going to head on this way. Um, let us know if you guys can hear us better. I know I saw a comment a few minutes um, that the person holds really well. So we'll just try to yeah, switch stuff in here. You may not be able to hear me, uh, but I actually have one of my reactions going in here um, it has to be here so that's where it's just stuff um we can plates and stuff like that to um keep the bacteria yeah awesome oh who is that <laughs> oh look at that oh hey this is huda so this is huda everybody Hi. Huda, do you mind answering a few questions for us yeah 
Thank you. So can you just introduce yourself and talk about your major and your year? Hi, I'm Rita. I'm a senior. I'm a biochem major at Mary Washington. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so hi, I'm Rita. I'm a senior at the University of Mary Washington, and I am a biochem major. So you're the first person we've come across as a biochem major. So, you know, that's a, that's something that a lot of people don't hear about. What is different about a biochem major from biology or chemistry? Um, so the biochem major kind of merges the two majors in a really fun and interesting way. Um, you learn about a lot of the biological aspects of chemistry rather than just fully chemistry or fully bio. Um, so I liked the best of both worlds for bio and chem and that's why I chose biochem as a major. So if you like bio and chem, but not one or the other, you can combine the two, which is really nice. So yeah. And what are your goals after undergrad? Um, I hope to go to med school, which is partially why I became a biochem major. And, yeah. and do you feel like Mary Washington has prepared you for med school? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think that the faculty here really equipped me for understanding why I wanted to become a doctor and then the tools I needed to become a doctor. So yeah. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks, Rita. Yeah, thanks. Have a nice night. You too. We're just going to head this way. Yeah. We're going to show you one of our molecular biology lab in our genetics lab. Mm -hmm. So I talked about how so this is actually the lab that I mean, as a lab aid. As <laughs> as lights. This is our biology lab here on campus. Uh, you'll take virology in here, microbiology in here, um, or class will be in here also. Um, but as you can see, we have a lot of different equipment on the benches for staining different bacteria, you know, different kinds of stains. Um, but this is just, you know, what a, a molecular biology lab looks like. Yep. Lots of different. For some culture you know, tubes. Yeah, culture and... tubes and petri dishes. Yeah. So we're going to head into the genetics lab next. Uh, this is where I work as a lab aide. Let me turn the light on real fast. So this is the genetics lab, uh, kind of the same deal uh, as the micro lab. Um, you can see we have uh, pipetters out of every station. So we have stands for those. Uh, they were just working on gel electrophoresis of uh, some DNA from plants. So um, all of that stuff is still set out. Um, they're gonna finish that up this week. And then, yeah, same, same kind of deal. Um, we have a PCR machine back here. Um, which is really cool. That's a method for amplifying DNA. Um, so we use that um, during the lab and more of the same stuff over here. We have um, an incubator uh, that we do a lot of genetics work with flies. So we keep them in there um, so that they can continue to grow. And then yeah, here's some of Dr. Wynn's notes about gel electrophoresis. Um, being a lab aide is really cool. Um, you get to you know, be paid to help set up all the lab stuff and make sure that it's ready um, for the students every week. Uh, and it's a really great way to use what you learn in the class and just keep going to help out. Helps you develop your, your lab skills, which is really, really yeah, good. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to go up the stairs to the fourth. this way first. So this is the fourth floor of Jepson. And so up, on, up here, we have a lot of our chemistry uh, stuff happening up here and our physics mm -hmm. department is up here. Um, so if we're gonna- We can go this way first. We're gonna, we're gonna go and show you the physics side. My bad, physics side. Yeah, and uh, then we'll come back to him. <laughs> the physics is in the new side of the building again. So they got lots of cool lab space. Yeah. Unfortunately, there weren't any physics students available to um, hang out and answer some questions for our tour. Um, but if you're interested in physics, um, one of the professors, Dr. Makija, um, he told me to send you my email so we can put that in the chat. Um, we'll also put our emails in the chat so you can contact us if you have any more questions. Um, but if you are interested in physics, he would love to set up an, a meeting with you to show you around the department, show you the different equipment. Um, but other than that, we're just gonna sh walk around a little bit, show you what is up here. Um, so this is the theoretical physics lab. Um, if you ask me what theoretical physics is, I couldn't tell you, but <laughs> <Could> I? <laughs> I do know it's, it's a really nice state-of-the-art um, uh, facility for physics. And then we'll head back this way. And so we have some 
Uh, really cool rooms here. Do I know exactly what they're used for? No, but they have cool danger lights up there. Yeah. So, you know, it's pretty serious. And business. don't panic. Happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are research labs for um, some of the physics students. Yeah, and then. Yeah. So this is one of our. Um, I'm a lecturer in here. So as you can see, um, it was a pretty small class. There were only 20 or so of us. Um, obviously, it's set up a little bit differently now because of COVID, but they can still fit a good number of people in here. Um, there's nice, yeah, big windows and this entire wall is a whiteboard. So you can write all kinds of fun chemistry on there. And there's another whiteboard out here too. And right there. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, so we, you know, we have a lot of research happening on the university, so we always post the posters of the students' work. Um, you know, we want to champion them and what they've accomplished. Yep. Then this is kind of the end of the physics lab side. This is where our physics uh, professors' offices are, and so obviously you see these boards in use this time. So yep. pretty intense. Lots of fun stuff. Fun I don't understand it, stuff. but it looks fun. <laughs> Head on back this way. And both sides just have uh, classrooms and labs for the physics department. One of the physics students, his name is Henry. Um, he is doing research right now that um, it involves a tool that is only found at Stanford. Um, and so if you think about the competitiveness of the work that's being done here, it is very competitive. It competes with those at Stanford. And um, so, you know, we, we really, Mary Washington has a lot to offer. There's a lot of hidden, hidden parts of it. So right in front of us right now, that's the Kim pod. Um, that's where a lot of people will sit to do work. Um, it looks like we have Val in there right now. So we can go talk to her. How are you? <laughs> Good. Yeah, I think um, so. We have a couple of questions for you. Sorry, yeah, so can you just introduce yourself first? Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. I'm Val. I am a sophomore here at Mary Washington. I'm a biomedical science major and I'm doing a minor in chemistry. And uh, what kind of clubs are you um, involved in that are related to sciences? Yeah, so around campus, I'm pretty involved science related. I am the president of Global Medical Brigades, which is a club here on campus that focuses on bringing medical needs and services to underserved communities. I'm also the vice president of Pre-Dental, which is like under the Pre-Health Society. And I am also a member of Chi Beta Phi, um, which is a STEM honor society. And I guess off campus, I am a dental assistant and I work for a local Fredericksburg dentist. And that was all those opportunities I was able to do at Premier Washington. And so you say you're a, um, a biomedical science major, but with a minor in chemistry. What do you love about chemistry? I love chemistry. <laughs> chemistry has always been one of my favorite subjects in school. Um, specifically about Mary Washington and their chemistry department. I just love the professors here. I know this is kind of weird, but my favorite class so far has definitely been organic chemistry. I know not many people say that, but I think the professors here have just made it so bearable and just so, such a good experience. And it's just so fun to figure it out as I go. And do you have any final advice for incoming freshmen? Advice for incoming freshmen? I think everybody says this, but just get involved. I think that's how I've been able to get so many opportunities and just get to know a lot of people. Involvement is so important. And you just, yeah, involved, get involved, do it, go out, do it. <laughs> Great, well, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, we can show you guys some of the other stuff that's in here as well. Um, the ACS orders, uh, the ACS club on campus will order lab coats every year. So you can get them like embroidered with your name on it. I'm in a cool eagle, that's mine. So we have a bunch of those hanging there. And then um, a couple of years ago, they had a competition to decorate goggles like different things so some of those um are over here on display and uh just lots of fun activities too within the chemistry department yeah. we don't work all the time right <laughs> yeah um we can go down this way yeah thank you sure I'll talk kata's gonna talk about this because this is her jam organic chemistry is her stuff yeah, my room right here she I lives here. It, but I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the organic and inorganic research lab. 
Uh, pardon the mess. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but everything, I know where everything is. Uh, and we have several people who use this um, for research. So um, this is a pretty cool machine right here, actually. Um, it's called an isolera. And basically it does chromatography. So it separates different compounds uh, and you just load them onto a little column like this and then run solvents through it. And they'll come out in these racks of little test tubes. Um, and it's pretty neat because uh, normally you have to like do that by hand and it takes a lot longer, but this usually one run takes like 10, 15 minutes and it has a little robotic arm that like comes around and um, like put the stuff in the test tubes and it's pretty awesome. We love modern technology. Yeah. Thank you, biotech. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, this is some of my stuff over here. I'm gonna look super exciting. It's just things in like test tubes, but um, if this gives you any insight, this is pretty much like the biggest thing I've done this semester. Um, this <laughs> project took quite a long time uh, and I got a little bit um, of yield out of it, but um, it's still pretty great for me. Uh, and I'm doing a poster uh, on that. Um, for next week for the research and creativity day. Um, little... Oh, sorry. sorry. I'm in her way. No, My bad. Fine. I just wanted to get out of the way. The team hooks are kind of loud. Um, so yeah, uh, Ryan was mentioning earlier about research, uh, doing summer of science. So um, I'm also going to be doing summer science um, this summer. Again, just kind of continuing the research I've been doing um, with organic chemistry. So yeah, you get paid a stipend um, you to live on campus for the summer. And continue research um, and just kind of do that like all the time. Um, I've been taking um, credits of undergraduate research since I started my freshman year. We work just entirely on the research um, just for like the whole day rather than little chunks of my day. Um, but it's a really awesome program that we have. And all the professors here are really great about getting you, uh, if you want to get involved in research, it's pretty easy to do that. Um, you, I just pretty much asked my organic professor, uh, very started my freshman year, and he had a spot for me uh, to jump on and do some research. So it's been a really uh, great part of my time here at Mary Washington. Great. There's some other fume hoods and stuff around here too. Um, the inorganic people also do research here. I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, yeah, they do that. <laughs> inorganic chemistry is a little outside of my league also. <laughs> uh, All right. Then. Sure, that's all right yeah. Phytotron. What the heck is that, Hannah? <laughs> so uh, this is Dr. Wynn's like area. Um, she is a biology professor and she does plant genetics. So we have some plants um, over here that they've been growing. I think she's just been growing these. Um, she has a daughter who's like four um, and they're just kind of doing it as a little side project. But they also have um, a couple of phytotrons in the other room um, where they grow plants that aren't going to be in there right now. But I can show you the cool things. Yeah. So this is what Dr. Wynn grows her plants in. Um, it enables her to control the temperature. Obviously, the ones in here are dead right now, um, and it's a little loud, but um, she can control the temperature, the humidity, um, whether there's wind, the amount of light, um, just to create a, um, you know, the same environment for all of the organisms. So got a little dark real quick, but we're going to turn the light back on. And so this is another part of the lab um, where she does some work and then it actually leads into our greenhouse here on campus. Um, so we do have a greenhouse. That we can use for, you know, lab, some of these when you're doing your um, unit and gonna learn about mother of thousands and all different kinds of cacti. Uh, do you have any, any words for the greenhouse? Um, not much. You can kind of see a view of some of the rest of campus oh, yeah. up here. It's pretty cool. So that's the HCC right over there and some woods. <laughs> but yeah. that is that. And then Right. So now we're going to show you guys the one of the instrument rooms um, that we have that we use for. Um, I use a lot of them for my research, but we also have um, an instrumental analysis class here that you take if you're a chemistry major or if you're doing the ACS certification for um, the biochemistry major. So we use all of those. Our entire lab is basically focused around learning how to use the different instruments 
so I can show you guys those. Cool. You have to explain where all these tools. Awesome. Great. Great. So this is like a busy place. Yeah. So this instrument here uh, is a DC, which is a gas chromatograph, um, chromatography machine. Um, this one has an FID, which is just the type of detector. It like lights a flame, and then that's how it detects things, which is cool. Um, you can use this. I use this for research a lot, so like all these sitting in here are mine. <laughs> um, but uh, it's pretty cool. It will show you basically what. Um, Kind of compounds you have in your sample and you can figure out how much of them you have based on the area that like shows up on the graph and this is an hplc um so that stands for high performance liquid chromatography we actually have two of them um this one's the one that we've been running recently uh and it does the same thing all of these are chromatography machines so they separate compounds uh, based on like their differences molecularly but um, this one is pretty neat as well we have some fun animals on top of that computer. I don't really know what that's about, but they're fun. Cool. Yeah. And then this is another GC, um, but this one is a GC mass spec. So if you've ever uh, watched like Bose or the other like crime scene investigation shows, and they talk about mass spectrometry, uh, that's what this is. So it's connected to it. And basically once the stuff gets separated, it uh, like blasts it really hard and breaks up all of the molecules into little tiny pieces and then uh the analysis of that will show up on the computer and it will tell you what compound it is so cool. um these are just gas tanks that are connected to those machines over there you have to usually run gas to them to get them to work this starting here, to look like nasa here, I'll <laughs> this is over just so you guys can hear me a little better uh because it's kind of loud back here but this is our brand new nmr um, it's a 300 megahertz NMR, I believe. So uh, one of the bigger ones, it's a lot bigger than the one we had before, which means it gets a lot better resolution. Uh, and you can look at all kinds of like organic compounds um, with this. You put them in these little tubes. It's kind of high up. So we have a step stool um, and I definitely use that to get up there, <laughs> but uh, you just put little samples in here and then it uses magnets uh, and this tank is filled with liquid nitrogen um, that uses that to give you an image. Let me see if there's any examples of what they look like. They're pretty cool. Yeah, so this is somebody's um, NMR from the other day. Um, that's just setting up the instrument. Yeah, that's a good example. And you can look at all those peaks and um, if you know how to read them, you can tell what the compounds are, which is neat. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to highlight? We have a little bit of extra time. We'll um, have a like little question and answer session in a minute. Um, but anything uh, else? I mean, she talked about a lot of the chemistry equipment that we have here. Do you want to, do you want to go into it? Sure. Um, and we also have a lot of really cool equipment for biology. So we have tissue culture labs um, where you can grow, you know, all kinds of organisms on a ground level. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. If, a lot of people have heard of PCR. The, the a lot of people have heard of PCR from the COVID test, um, but we do PCR and qPCR here in um, at the university. Um, we have both those machines, so um, you know we can take DNA and and measure the amount of DNA in um, a sample, or we can take it from RNA and turn it into DNA to measure those amounts too. Um, and so we do a lot of really cool things. Um, we've had this thing called a count test in here that counts our cells for us. So we don't have to do that the really big process. Um, but yeah, so there's just a lot of really cool opportunities for students to get involved in research, um, to try different tools in class. Um, one requirement that, uh, if you, that you'll have in any of the science majors, will have, it'll be a research intensive. So it'll be designated RI. Um, and so you'll have some of those inside your major that you can do. Um, like microbiology is, is an RI class, um, or you can do independent research um, in your time here. So it's a, you know, 491 is what it's, is what it's called. Um, and 
at least for the biology department, it's 491. Is it 491? Yeah, it's 491 okay. for chemistry as well. Great. So those are like independent research projects that you can create your own proposal, do your own research with the help of a professor, obviously. Um, and those will satisfy those capstone um, requirements also. So there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in, in research. Yeah. And um, I don't know the specifics for biology, but for chemistry, um, you can also use that chemistry 491 that you take to fulfill departmental honors. So um, if you are like in the honors program or something like that, then you can use it for your capstone, but you can also uh, try to go for departmental honors with chemistry um, so that you have like an honors degree. And uh, the way that that works for chemistry, you take four uh, credits of Chem 491, both semesters of your senior year, and then you end up kind of like writing your thesis in the end, and you have to uh, defend that in front of like the panel of the chemistry professors, which I'm kind of nervous to do that, um, but I went to uh, a couple of uh, my peers' defenses last semester, um, and they did fantastic, um, but once you defend and everything like that, then you uh, can earn honors in chemistry. I'm assuming it's kind of a similar situation for biology. Yeah, it's very similar. So you'll have a, um, a uh, committee that you, know, you meet with every week or every other week. Um, you have a very strict schedule for the time when you have to have you know, your proposal in, your research data. So in, in the biology department, I don't know if it's the same for the chemistry department, but you have to have data. Um, so, you know, typically students take the whole senior year to work on their um, caps that they're, I mean, they're, what is it called? Um, departmental honors. Um, and so that takes the whole senior year because you want to get data. You want to have that time to you know do all the things you need to, to get the numbers and, and the data, the raw data that you need. So you can then analyze it and write your thesis. And same thing, you, you know, defend it in front of, um, you know, your uh, panel of, biology professors and then uh, they are the ones who determine whether you graduate with departmental honors or not and so there's a difference there's university honors which is part of um, if you're part of the honors college you get university honors by completing all the honors college requirements you know taking the required um, honors courses um, and meeting all of those requirements and graduating i think it's a 3.2 or higher um, if you graduate 3.2 or higher then you can graduate with university honors and then departmental honors uh, are actually harder um, it's a harder thing to do um, a lot of students who are going into you know graduate school like phd programs or med school um, they check those out and try and pursue those um, because it, it looks really good on an application to those um, graduate school programs so um if you guys have any questions for us you can feel free to either unmute and ask them or yeah ask them in the chat i see one came in hi um how does the psychology program work with other sciences and neuroscience great um, so I know um, one of our other core guides, uh, her name is Katie, she's a neuroscience minor, um, so I wish she was here, she could answer more yeah. specific questions about neuroscience, um, but I know that obviously, yeah, that is connected with psychology. Yeah. Um, psychology is housed in a different building, um, a little bit farther um, from here across campus, it's called Mercer, um, so the, all of the like psychology classes you would need to take uh, would be in there. But um, I think, at least from my understanding, a lot of the um, the neurobio stuff is with um, like they do work with animals and stuff like that in terms of like the biology component of it. Um, uh, do you yeah. have anything to add? Yeah. So there's a there are like the neuroscience minor is actually a really popular minor. A lot of students do it because yeah. it really connects psychology with biology. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, Dr. Odell teaches the neurobiology class, and then. There um, are a lot of students who do that neuroscience minor, and a lot of the classes are actually psychology classes. Mm -hmm. um, so um, neuropsychology is one of the classes that you take, and I know this because I, I thought about pursuing it for a little bit. Uh, but there are it's definitely a lot of psychology classes um, and a little less biology classes, um, but they all interconnect. Um, and so, like our coworker Katie, um, she is doing research with mice, and so you know, same with the psychology department. Um, there are also opportunities to get departmental honors and do research. So I was in an intro psychology class this semester and one of our requirements was to participate in the different research studies that are happening. Um, and so, you know, those are put on by students. Um, the students in the department decided to um, do those research um, studies that had to be approved by the department. Um, and I guess like distance wise, the psychology, you know, our campus is, is fairly small. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, from one end to the other, you can walk 10 minutes. Um, so the Mercer is probably a, a five minute walk from Jepson, yeah. not really anything crazy. 
pretty close and there's also very very good resources in there too yeah because uh mercer i believe was just built in like 2015 or 2016 so um it's a really new building and as ryan alluded to they have a lot of research spaces in there as well um and yeah a lot of their research obviously since it's psychology it's like kind of human centered so a lot of theirs is having uh other university students um people yeah in like the intro psych classes or just anyone kind of like come and participate in those studies um and that's yeah, kind of how they like get together their research so that was a good question thank yeah. you yeah anything else please ask any anything that you're itching to know it doesn't even have to be about science yeah we're both tour guides so we get lots of questions let's see another one let's pull up the chat yeah Hannah. yeah oh hammer i'm sorry hammer right yeah, we definitely hope that you guys can come um, and, you know, see it in person um, soon. Usually uh, in normal years when I'm on tour, I try to bring people in Jepson and show it off a little bit. But Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's a really beautiful building. A lot happens in here. Another question. Okay, let me. Sorry, guys. It's kind of hard to see the chat on my phone. Oh, so Val, I think you're talking about, so Val, um, she has an off-campus job. Yeah, I can definitely put her email in the chat. Um, what social life like? Um, so, well, okay, so yes, there are a lot of opportunities to work off-campus. Um, Val actually is, so she's on the pre-dental track um, and she did a dental program in high school. Um, and so, you know, if you, if you have a pre-health society that she talked about, um, she's, a, she's the vice president of the uh, pre-dental. Um, and so that's actually how she got the job through the Pre Health Society. So if you're interested in getting a job at a clinic or working in a dental, um, you know, area, um, then definitely try and get involved with with the Pre Health Society because they send out you know notifications all the time of um, having a scribe position available, um, or you know, dental positions available or medical assistant positions available. Um, so those are you know advertised a lot in the um, Pre Health Society. Um, and I'll put all of our information down. In the yeah, chat we'll too. put it all down before we leave. Um, also, in terms of yeah, off-campus jobs that relate to clinical stuff, um, I will say um, you can do a lot of like volunteering on um, off-campus. I have volunteered at the Lloyd F. Moss uh, Free Clinic. It's like right across the street, so it's pretty close by. Uh, and uh, you can do uh, a lot of different volunteer um, kind of activities there um, and just sort of get started off with some uh, clinical experience. Um, we're also really close to Mary Washington Hospital. Um, so a lot of people will work there. We have a FEMA scribe program uh, that you can apply to. Um, I've been looking at that and I'm interested. They just don't have any part-time positions right now. Um, but when they do, I might end up applying to that. Um, so you can work as a scribe in the ER, uh, kind of while you're a student here. And uh, there also are other jobs there too. I actually um, just interviewed uh, for a CNA job because I uh, have my license and you know work as a CNA at home. Um, so I'm going to start working as a CNA at the at Mary Washington Hospital uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Um, so those are definitely things that you can also get interested, um, get involved in, and the pre health society. Uh, will help you look for any kind of any kind clinical of hours uh, for um, for that. So. Okay. And I also um, work in um, the. So I'm a. I have an off campus job. I'm a medical assistant also. So I work at a local clinic um, too. So a lot of students do that. Yeah. I'm gonna. Sorry. I'm. I'm on my phone trying to put. Our, yeah, we're our gonna put some stuff in the chat. In the chat. So um, we can address the question about social life while you're doing that. Yeah. Um, so I don't, you want to start? Or... Um, yeah. So I, um, I, like I said, is this still talking? I turned off the screen. Um, okay. There we go. But like I said, I am a, a commuter student. So like I was born and raised here. I drive into school every day. Um, and as far as the social life, um, there are a lot of students from local areas. So a lot of times students will go home on weekends, but there are also a fair number of students who stay on campus. Mm -hmm. And so they try and have different activities for students to take part of like we have $2 movies on Saturday nights. Um, during COVID, it's a little different. We can't do those right now. Um, but $2 movies on Saturday nights in the HTC is something that we offer. Um, they try and do different events on the weekends, um, but also downtown is just a 10 to 15 minute walk away uh, from campus. Um, and downtown, you know, is busting with food, places to eat, you know, shops to shop in. Um, and so it's a really great place to go and hang out with your friends. As far as, you know, we don't have a whole lot of 
big event, big like um, places to go to to do things with people. And we have like bowling alleys, movie theaters, you know, the traditional stuff. Um, but outside of that, it's definitely a lot more of like food, um, community, you know, walking around, going to get to go shopping. Um, but do you have any other? Yeah. You lived on campus. Um, yeah. So yeah, I live on campus. Um, and yeah, Ryan uh, mentioned a lot of stuff. So the campus programming board puts on uh, a lot of events just throughout the semester. Um, like he said, they do a lot of stuff on like weekends. So the two dollar movies, um, but they also uh, will have a couple of like concerts a year where they bring artists in um, and perform. There's a ton of events that you can go to and get free t-shirts. Um, I have a whole stack of t-shirts that I have acquired from various events and stuff, which is kind of like the hallmark of college is just going to everything to get free t-shirts. Um, and we also, yeah, like Brian was saying, have a lot of stuff um, that you can do downtown. Downtown is also really close to the Rappahannock River. Uh, so there's like a river trail that you can walk on um, or bike on. You can also do kayaking, canoeing, stuff like that. Um, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, we're also uh, pretty close about, you know, 50 miles from both DC and Richmond. So um, if you're interested in like taking a weekend trip, I know a lot of people will do that um, and just go to DC or Richmond uh, for either just the day or the weekend. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, stuff that can be um, fun to do there as well. So there's, you can definitely find a lot of ways to get involved. Um, also like during the week, they do bingo every Tuesday night. They give away like really expensive, nice prizes. So oh, really? <laughs> uh, I've never won. I'm kind of mad about it, but yeah. If you go enough times, I feel like the statistics and like the odds would be in your favor that you would win something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they do that every Tuesday. I know they do a lot of like karaoke night stuff. Um, all that happens in the underground, which is on a place in Lee Hall uh, that you know you can, students can gather. Um, and yeah, those events happen there too. So if you guys have any more questions, keep them coming. Sorry, I'm trying to copy. Yeah, Ryan faithfully putting all of our information down in the chat. Um, yeah, let's see. How does work or study impact um, schedule like study time? It's a really good question. Yeah. Um, I think that's totally up to you. Um, so if you're the kind of person who did it, you know, where one thing you'll learn about yourself in college, if you haven't learned it yet in high school, is the kind of studying student that you are. Um, and so some students, you know, like dedicate days to studying for exams, and some students don't need that. Um, and so in college, if you haven't figured that out already, you will figure that out. And that will kind of dictate what um, your, um, what your, you know, work situation can look like. So I work um, every weekend, all weekend, and at my medical assistant job. And then I also have the two jobs on campus. So um, in those in addition to clubs, I'm pretty busy. Um, I don't dedicate days to studying for exams, um, even though maybe I should, you know, but um, I, I'm the kind of student who can, you know, uh, doesn't need all of that, that time to do that. Um, so I, I can have a little more freedom in the different choices, like activities that I choose to do. Uh, but it's totally up to you. You can pick whether you want to you know, have, you know, all these jobs and be a part of all these clubs, or if you just want to pick a few things. Um, and even going into various fields, if you choose to go into medicine or a PhD program, or um, you just, you know, anything, um, they want to see that you are dedicated. So whatever that looks like for you, um, whether that's just picking one club and really dedicating your time to that club um, and becoming, you know, uh, part of the executive board, um, that will really show that you can dedicate your time to that, to one thing. Um, instead of, you know, jumping all, all around the place. So there's really benefits to both. Um, neither is one, neither one is better than the other. Just people, what people want to see when it comes to graduate school is um, definitely dedication. Um, so yeah. it's totally up to you. I and mean, do you have any other? Um, yeah, I was also going to say, yeah, just about like graduate schools um, or, you know, like um, medical school, PA school, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it really is, you know, they want to see your devotion to things. So it probably honestly is better to just pick a couple of things yeah. and really be involved in those rather than like, I did this for a little while. I did this, I did that. Um, because, you know, it really is quality over quantity, um, for that. So if that's something that you're worried about, like you feel like you have to be involved in so many things, um, you definitely don't have to be. And it's really more important how you choose to spend that time. Uh, but the other thing I would say is just that once you get to college, um, you'll realize that 
like the timing of like when you're in class um, is really different than high school. Um, I mean, people will tell you that, but like you don't really realize that it's true until you get here. Um, you're not going to be in class for, you know, like seven, eight hours a day like you are in high school. Um, you really have those times when you're in class. You can a lot of the times pick your schedule um, around, uh, you know, when you want to be in class. Sometimes specific classes are only offered at one time. So you don't really have a choice if you want to take the class. Um, but for the most part, you can really tailor your schedule to whatever works for you. So like, I don't have any classes on Thursdays this semester. So I work in the admissions office in the morning and then I spend my afternoons doing research. Um, and then I also have time in the afternoons uh, on like Monday and Wednesday that I do research kind of in, and uh, my lab aiding stuff kind of in between classes. So you really do have a lot more like, downtime and little spaces in between those um, classes that you go to that you wouldn't have in high school. And you can take uh, that and use it to your advantage for getting, you know, other stuff done. So the question next is, uh, how do you study for science classes? Um, again, that's totally depends on the student. Um, some students um, really, really value their repetition. Some students need to, you know, look through slides time and time again. Other students need to, you know, make diagrams and color code things. Um, and so that's something that's different for everybody. And sometimes it might even change for a semester. I found myself, you know, really into highlighting one semester. And then the next semester, I'm into using a different pen for every class period. And so um, I think it it totally depends on, on you as a, as a student um, and what helps you um, recall the information that you've learned in class. Um, I, I don't know if you have any. Um, yeah, I would say the same thing. I also, uh, I know myself and I know that I typically learn better um, and study better when I'm by myself. Um, but there definitely are people who benefit a lot from studying in groups. Um, and a lot of our classes really uh, emphasize and want you to do that. So for instance, I feel like I keep talking about her, but Dr. Uh -huh. Wynn is amazing. Um, but for Dr. Wynn's genetics class, um, she'll actually give you extra credit uh, up to, I think, three points. Um, yeah. If you send her a selfie of you, and I think it's at least like two or three other people in a group studying uh, leading up to the exam. So that really will encourage people to, you know, get in that group setting and study. I I didn't do that a whole lot just because I know that like I don't learn best in a group environment so I kind of will either reserve a room in the library um, or go find a spot in the Hurley Convergence Center on um, the HCC and uh, I'm a really big whiteboard girl so I uh, have like small whiteboard in my room if I could have a full-size whiteboard in my room I actually looked into it but it's like 200 bucks um, for some reason but uh you, I have whiteboards and I like to like write stuff down and work it out in there. Um, there's a couple of classrooms in the HCC that are like my hidden secret, even though I'm telling all of you guys, um, but uh, they have whiteboards on every wall. So I go in there and just kind of write out all of like the mechanisms and the pathways and stuff that I'm trying to learn. Um, and it really helps me to just kind of use all of the colored expo markers and like write everything out. But it really just depends. Um, you'll find your group as you go along. I think it also depends on the class you're taking. So yeah. a lot of like mechanisms that she's talking about, it's a lot of organic chemistry. And so, you know, being able to draw, you have a lot of structures you have to remember. And so being able to draw those structures um, are really important. And I think that's really big. And a lot of professors actually encourage students to use uh, boards too. So, you know, you'll study a little differently for all of your classes. Um, the next question was, where can we learn more about the various on-campus jobs? And I'm telling you guys, you can get an on-campus job in almost any department on campus. Um, whether it is, you know, we have writing and speaking centers that have uh, jobs for students, you know, you get a job in the biology, in any of the science department, any of the different sections uh, um, as a lab aide, um, you can, you know, there's just so many different yeah, options like for students. like the fitness center, um, yeah. a lot of people work there. Um, people work as like desk attendants for the university center and for the HCC. So yeah, there's tons of options. There's a, a like a, it's called like UMW Careers, I think if you Google it, um, and you can look at student employment, uh, and just kind of like scroll through the list all of the positions that are open will be on there just so you can kind of get a feel for what they uh what's usually open but no you can find a job pretty much everywhere on campus also yeah. all of the like dining locations yeah. um all have on campus jobs yeah. and then um the next question is how independent is your research like how much help or guidance did you get from or do you get from a professor um, for your proposed idea mm -hmm. um for me my research experience was um during um you know, so I'm UREZ, and so UREZ, I am, you know, work, helping a professor with their research, not independent, but then my summer science is a little more independent. 
Um, and, but still I was doing stuff that I never learned about. So I was very dependent on my professor for that, but I think Hannah's experience is a little different. Um, yeah. So mine's yeah, kind of similar, kind of different. So, uh, I did URES my freshman year last year, um, for chemistry, you're only allowed to take URES twice. Um, so I took that both my fall and spring semester. And with that, that stands for undergraduate research. Um, so that is a lot more like professor guided, I would say, um, I, I would say my professor is pretty, uh, my advisor is pretty hands off. Like he's always there if I need to go ask him questions. Um, but he just kind of like ran me through things in the beginning. And then you know, just kind of like, let me go from there. But I always know that if I have questions, I can go ask him. Um, but then I transitioned uh, into taking Chem 491, uh, which is just kind of a way that you can continue research if you've already maxed out your U.S. credits. Uh, and so uh, that is a little bit more independent. Like Ryan was saying, traditionally, that's where you kind of design your own project um, and go from there. And I'm assuming I probably will do that starting my senior year, uh, but I just kind of have been continuing the research that I did in my U.S. Um, and that was uh, like it's kind of an idea that this professor has had for a while and he's had different groups of students over the past honestly like five or six years um, just working on pieces and parts of it so I kind of have come in and redone some of the things that older students had done um, and find found ways to improve them and now I'm kind of at the point where I'm pushing forward into the new part that people haven't done before um, which is a little scary but he's definitely there to help me out uh, and answer any questions about what direction I'm headed next. So there's a lot of opportunities. Um, again, if if you're someone who you know is really into the into the research, it can be totally independent with you know just clearing things with your professor, um, or it can be um, a lot of going off of you know what they've been working on. Because a lot of professors, what they work on has been what they've been working on since they um, got into graduate school for their PhD program. So they're working on a lot of the same stuff um, because a lot of the work is a lifetime kind of thing. It just one thing leads to another. You just keep going down the rabbit hole. Um, so either you can create your own project completely, or you can just kind of branch off of theirs and do something with them, uh, whatever you prefer. And that's, that's the cool thing, cool part about, um, like 491. Yeah. Um, but you do have to write your own proposal for what you want for that. Yeah. Those are really great questions. Thanks, Abigail. Yeah. Great. So we're um, coming up on seven o'clock, so we can stick around. Um, if you guys have any lasting questions that you want to ask us, um, we'll be here. Um, I think, Brian, you put all of our info in the chat, right? Yeah, so I put um, my information, Hannah's information, Val's information, and Dr. McKeesha, if you're interested in physics. Um, and I kind of wrote a little blurb about um, each of us, just, you know, our interests. So if you want to email any of us, please feel free. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be about science. It can be about anything. Yeah. Just let us know about anything. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Olivia. Thank you, yep. Samantha. Thank you, guys. Yeah.